boring, yeah, yeah Hi. Hi guys, we're back again. Burr, 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 burr. We're back. Back in this motherfucker. We're back. Um, um girl. What I have my joke of the week. I'm ready. We just get right into it. You can it. go ahead with your joke of the week because I don't know if I have one yet. So go ahead. So my joke of the week, which ties into the theme of this episode, is mm-hmm. my body that hates me. Mm-hmm. So let's fast forward. Well, rewind back to 2018. I had mm-hmm. some pasta. Delicious. My friend had made some pasta. We were having fun. Boom, boom, boom. Mm. I get gas. Mm. I start burping profusely. Mm. And it never stopped. It's been five years. You do have a burp thing. I have a burp. No, it's like it's a medical yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. when I eat certain things, I burp. And after shortly after I started burping, I gained 10 pounds. And I was like, what the fuck is this? Those 10 pounds have never gone away. Mm-hmm. I could lose like five, six, seven pounds, but you I have plateau. not been. I plateau. I've not I was like 156. In 2018, I sit before you at 190. Mm. That's up today. It's probably, mm. I'll probably be 196, I mean, 186 tomorrow. But it's just like, mm-hmm. right now I'm 190. And it's just mm-hmm. like, I have not been able to get this weight off. I'm like, what the fuck is the problem? At the time, I didn't have insurance. I couldn't really look into it. Mm-hmm. I've asked my doctor certain questions. She kind of gave me some stomach pills like two years ago, and they made me feel worse. So I was like, damn, that's not going to work. Like, what the fuck am I going to do? And I finally, then Christmas, mm-hmm. I broke out into hives. And I was in hives all week. But when I saw you or after? I had, I had halves that day, too. I had oh, my. Day. It'll I'm be sorry. on my hands. It'll come up on my, my, my thighs, whatever. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? That sounds fucking awful. So I went to the doctor again. I said, hey, bitch, what the fuck is happening to me? And um, they did a blood allergy test. Mm-hmm. And I figured, and I also went to the stomach doctor, and they I have a procedure next month, actually, that I have to, they have to get a culture of my fucking esophagus. So, like, my mama got to take me and everything. It's a whole thing. Mm. So I had to look in. I've done the things. And I took out my blood results back, and they told me what I'm allergic to. This bitch went on for five minutes. Beans, greens, tomatoes, potatoes. Like, literally. Like, <laughs> you mean? Like, literally? <sighs> it's so much shit on this fucking list. Like, I just, let me see if I can number it. No, they don't have you. They don't let you number it on here. I'm going to read it. I'm going to read the whole list. And none of this is like. EpiPen, so if y'all listen to this and try to murder me by giving me something I'm allergic to, I'm not going to die. Well, so. In what situation would these people be trying to murder you? Did you watch Glass Onion? Fine. Move on. Did, did I watch, watch Glass Onion? You watched it together. We watched it together. You didn't watch it together. But I watched the last, like, 10 minutes of 20 minutes at home. Oh, yeah. So True. I don't know if you finished it. I did finish it. I enjoyed it. Milk, wheat, rye, barley, oats, corn, white rice, lentils, cheese, oranges, grapefruit, grapefruit. Fruit, excuse me, lemon, tangerine, spinach, cauliflower, celery, lettuce, broccoli, cabbage, cucumbers, peanuts, egg whites, green peas, soybean, tomatoes, carrots, white potatoes, green beans, onions, pumpkin, scallops, apples, peach, peaches, pears, and bananas. I told you this before we got on air. You the goddamn bubble boy. I can't feed you no more. What am I supposed to cook for you? How am I supposed to feed you? What are we going to do? Milk, cheese, white potatoes, white rice. You can't eat shit from American Deli. Broccoli. You can't have none of the stuff. At Wheat. We can't have no more Grand Lux dates. I'm going to do what the fuck I want to <laughs> do. You can't eat shit. But it's certain stuff. Like, I'm glad you went and did that. But as for me in my home, I really don't need to know. Unless it's going to kill me, I'm good. I don't I don't care. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't care. It's just been a Because if I thing. find out I can't eat a white potato, that might be my breaking point. Do you know that might be the end. Do you know shit is made with white potatoes? The best shit. Potatoes are delicious. I'm not giving up potatoes. I'm, I'm just honestly, not doing it. It's not gonna find happen. Milk. We can find a workaround for milk. Mm-hmm. So now you gotta drink like oat milk and shit. Yeah, cheese. Sure. You can give up cheese. Not for real. Cheese no. is delicious. I'm not gonna be, but I have to. All of this sounds. But horrible, this may be the domino effect of why my gas started and why the, when the gas fucked my yeah. stomach up, my stomach fucked my weight up. Yeah, you probably need to see a um. A gastroenterologist. I did. Oh, you did. That's what I'm saying. I had the procedure. With oh, them. oh, 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 oh. Okay. Yeah, I don't know how to yeah, say yeah. that word. Gastro. I don't say gastro. I mean. No, no. We're gonna do it. Gastro. Gastro. Enter. Ologist. And all and all together. Gastroenterologist. There you go. You got it. Yeah. yeah um, so that's the people I had to go to. Um, I don't know, man. That sounds really bad. 
I hate that for you. I hate it for me as well. It really fucking sucks. Yeah. Also, my second joke of the week is um, I quit my job. Yay. I just fell in love. love. I just I quit, quit my, my job. job. I have quit my job, but I feel like I have even less time. Yeah. Being, I was talking about this with my friend the other day, being unemployed is very busy. And not, so not that you're unemployed because you're doing comedy, but like you end up realizing that the time that you spend at work could very well have been being filled with other things. And now you have to do the other things. And now I have to do it. Last week, it was my first week of unemployment. I'm like, oh, I'm going to sleep in. I'm going to sleep in. No, I did no. not. I did not have free time or sleep in. Like mm-hmm. Monday, Monday I slept in a little bit and I went to some grocery shopping and like kind of got some stuff and sent some emails. I was so productive. Tuesday, I've signed up for acting classes. I'm in acting classes now. It's really, it's really fucking cool. It's awesome. Really fun. It's three hours. Three hours a, a class? Yes, yeah, but it's only one class a week. Okay. So it's just one day a week. Okay. Um, but like, I have to plan my day around. That's why I like when I was like, hey, what time are we doing? So I can mm-hmm. plan my day mm-hmm. because I have to schedule my day to the second so I can. Factor in rest, mm-hmm. washing my ass, whatever the fuck else I need to be doing. So, like, Tuesday, I was like, I got to get back in the gym because, like, I'm trying to work this shit. I'm wondering why I'm not losing weight, but mm-hmm. it's because of all this fucking food mm-hmm. that's, like, attacking my body. But, um, yeah, so I had to go to the gym at 7 because he didn't have no 8 appointment. Mm-hmm. Then I went to L.A. Fitness to wash my ass. I was like, let me do a 3 thir- 12, 3.30 real quick, mm-hmm. sit in the sauna, then wash my ass, mm-hmm. then get dressed in the gym, do my makeup, all Then dress shit. in the gym is the worst. It I is, fucking it hate it. It is not easy at all. Mm-hmm. And then, um, I, it do be a little bad, though, honestly. Like, you feel so productive when you're, like, in there, and, like, you you done, it's, like, only 10 o'clock in the morning. It's like, I got the whole day. So like, I don't okay. like showering in spaces that aren't private to me. Even That's hotels, I'd be like. Oh, I love that. But, honestly, staying in a traditional dorm at an HBCU before they started really regulating shit you could, I have walked through the valley of the shadow of death. I Period. can do anything. So you give me some shower shoes and a little, and a little bag, I could, I could wash my I was down to them uh, C.J. Dunn Towers at Alabama State. Baby. Ooh. I just, I will not, I was going to my auntie house to shower when I could. Like, after a while, them showers start feeling like jail. You got to break it up with a real shower. The showers were bad. Like, I need a like, shower with a curtain. I can kind of take anything public restroom-wise wise now. Because it's like was born in it. Like, we'll be out. I was born in the darkness. I was born in the darkness. <laughs> I can take anything. Now, living in the HBCU dorm will, like, teach you how to adapt. Mm. And we really used to think we was a shit with them nasty ass showers. They wasn't even out with Nasty, high. and you couldn't even clean it for real. Like, you would start cleaning it and then just get defeated. Like, you'd be like, I'm the one that's going to make it sparkle. No, like the not. fuck you're not. It's not going to sparkle. It's not going to sparkle. It's and disgusting. And that's why these HB, like, they've torn it down. It's, it was just no, it was no renovating for that. When I moved, when I was on, when I got to the yard my freshman year, um, they put me in a dorm. It had clear mold in the room to the point where my stepmom had to be like, my child is not staying in this room. And they're like, well, that's her assignment. My stepmom had to like put her dick on the table and be like, we'll, we'll end all this shit because my child has other offers. Because won't nobody stay nowhere. We'll, nowhere we'll, we'll go somewhere else. And I'll call the people. Like she had to like really like elevate the shit. Baby, being down to them dorms, it was like a fun jail. It was a, it very was fun, a jail. fun jail. It was a fun jail where you could leave. But, like, we had the The, the fights lady. in the hallway, the dorm mothers. The, the dorm mother, she mm-hmm. was sitting at RJ Skinner. She was sitting at desk, and you would, like, have your big Bessie Johnson bag mm-hmm. and your Ugg boots walking out of that bitch, and she'd just be like, mm. Mm. Baby. <laughs> and Baby. Just, mm. Mm-hmm. And that's all it, or like you coming in, everybody leaving for church, and you coming in on a Saturday morning, a Sunday morning with your baby, baby, bed. baby, honey. Everybody used to be co- going for church. I come back, my church my struggle. fucking leave out, be sweating out, <laughs> my, shit being, my shit being a ball. You getting dropped off with a, a, a by a center in front of the getting stairs. dropped off looking stupid, looking dumb. Hey, and don't let it be your friends going for church. Hey, hey, girl. hey, hey, girl. I established myself as a tawdry little slut right from the beginning, though. Mm-hmm. I, people knew my brand. Like, I, I'm i here. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I came to school. I don't even want to be here. I came to school to pick three niggas and fuck them the whole time I'm here. That's what I came <laughs> three for. Three is good. Huh? You did good with three. Three, three is a night. Well, I did more than three. <laughs> but three was my plan. Three was definitely my plan. Like, I came. Where are the hoes? I came here for the dick. Yes. That's what I'm here I for. Should have, honestly, if I could go back, I probably would have. I would start fucking like maybe. I, I think it hit me all at once when I got to campus. And it took me a while to realize, like, my, how fine I was. I Because, like, in school, I knew I had a big ass, and I knew I was funny. 
I knew those were the two things working in my fucking favor. And you would, that was half the battle. I was half the battle. I never thought I was like obscenely like pretty. Not because nobody ever told me. It's just not something I thought about myself. I thought a lot of girls were prettier than me. Which looking back <laughs> to me, be calm. But I just didn't yeah, think I was so pretty. Think they pretty. Or don't think nobody pretty. You can put Beyonce in here. I'm like, you are beautiful. But, <laughs> but. <laughs> can you do stand up? Exactly. Her. So you can But no, when I, I got do. to school and I realized the marked difference behind me, how men reacted to me versus how they reacted to other girls, I was like, oh, I'm that bitch. bitch. I got to school and niggas was on my body and I was like, ayo, because this is what I wanted anyway. I didn't have to tell a joke, a limerick, a snigger. I'm, I'm getting the bitches. And that's what I came for. Oh, Loved man. that for me. Soon as I realized I was getting eyes, I was like, <laughs> I put that pussy to the pavement, baby. I had me a grand you. old time. Grand time. It was, oh. Mm. Yeah, you know, regrets. I have. Some you have some regrets. I have regrets. I mean, I have regrets too. I always look at the girls who like got to school, founded you, got married, and really like got their like bachelors in husbandry, and it's really like I like the girls who hold and still found their husband. I don't have the. I think. I think I kind of my brand towards like how I felt about men. I kind of overdid it with the hating men outwardly because everybody knew it. Like even when they would talk amongst themselves, they're very much like she's a man eater. Like. It's very hard to like be my boyfriend. Yeah. And so, and that was the conversation. Like, and not even on some, oh, you can fuck her, but she not wifey material. Like, no, nigga, you are not wifey material. <laughs> and that's how she goes about and the world. Was, they was not still down. Not, they was not ready to hear some no. shit like that. Mm -mm, they they was not down for that. At all. Uh uh. Um, I mean, what's your joke of the week? My joke of the week is that on the first day of my sobriety, which I should have did these backwards because we talked about this in the last episode, but on the first day of my sobriety, um, was the first day of the year a weekend or something? Something yeah. happened. It was a Sunday. And usually on the first, like, day of the year, like, I will take myself out to eat and go get myself a drink because that's how I like to start the new year, like, really spoiling myself and pampering myself. And then once I realized it got around, I would say, like, 1 or 2 p.m. maybe. I had already considered dyeing my hair. But once I realized, I was like, ooh, you cannot have alcohol for a number of weeks. Like, I got manic. I was like, oh, what am I finna do? So the first thing out of my mind was, oh, we finna just cook. Because, you know, once I start losing my mind, I start baking cheesecakes and shit and, like, making pasta. But I'm like, you're going to be a big hulking bitch by the time this is over if you let the fact that you can't drink make you cook so much in the kitchen and then you don't invite people over to eat it. And I didn't want to invite a bunch of people over because I'm supposed to be sober and I'm a very easily influenced person. So the first time people ask me twice, you sure you don't want to drink? Now I'm blacked <laughs> out. So <laughs> right, so, another. another. So I was like, "What can I do?" And I looked at myself and said, "You'd be great blonde." And so I put it on Twitter, and I was like, "I'm I'm gonna dye my hair blonde, yes or no, something like that." And people was like, "Yes, yes, yes." So it's fueling my mania. I'm like, mm. "So I text Rita, and I said, Rita, I'm about to dye my hair." And she's like, "What?" <sighs> and then she FaceTimes me, and I'm like, "Yeah, I'm finna dye my hair." And then I text my friend Deja, and I said, "I'm about to dye my hair." She said, "Put the bleach down, bitch." And people are like calling me. I think you I, called me. And I was like, "Yeah." Yeah, 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 I called my mom. My mom's like, what? No, all your hair's going to fall. I'm like, fuck yeah, I'm going to do it. So I'm in the Sally's breathing hard and shit. And I'm like, yeah, I want to dye my hair Give blonde. blonde. And the guy is like, are you well? <laughs> He's like, are you okay? And I'm like, no. He's like, do you know what you're doing? I'm like, yes. He's like, let me see your Instagram. I was like, look, I do all my own hair. This is all me. <laughs> He's like, fine <laughs> so we start talking about the shit then another girl valeria she comes to help me she was so sweet and i love her name valeria comes to help me we're sitting here talking so i got my shit you know sally gives you those paper bags now and carrying paper bags you always look like a lunatic no matter who you are or how well put <laughs> carrying a carrying a paper bag you look like you're finna do some shit you're not supposed to do so i got a big ass paper bag full of stuff i'm just in the house furiously bleaching my hair i'm mixing shit i'm in there the dog is like this he's like He's concerned. These are new smells. <laughs> Just like, had so much anxiety. He was like, like, my mom's he was like crazy. what the fuck? And then so when I finally, because it was like a four-step process to get to this color. So when I bleached it and I finally sat down and let the bleach process, Jodeci just come sit on the couch and put his paw on me and was like, and he laid his head on me. He's like putting his head on me and looking up at me like, bitch, are you good? Are you okay? But then when I finished the color, so when I, 
finished the color and rinsed all the color out and my hair was curly because you know wet hair is darker so when it was just curly I'm like crying I'm like this isn't the color I was going for I'm such a loser I'm like berating myself I'm like you failed da, 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 da. and something in my head said blow it straight I mean blow it out and press it out and baby I said mania if this is mania I'm down for it because this looks amazing. But I will do some dumb shit apparently when I'm trying not to drink. So I've learned that. And then every other day I've had an impulsive manic thought. And I've just had to be like, nope. Can you give me a couple? I wanted to go get a tattoo. I do want to go get a tattoo. I wanted to go throw eggs at my dad's house. Fair. But I did not do that. I was also going to go throw eggs at Patrick's house. Didn't do that as well. I wanted to buy some like new ninja products for my kitchen. Like some oh, new appliances. Like actual, like nunchucks. Mm -mm, but fun, no. But I would consider that. But um, yeah, I want to go buy some new appliances. And I was like, nope, you don't have space for that in here. You live in a Cracker Jack box. No, you can't do that. But I've had a lot of like manic things that, that I wanted to do. But I didn't. And this. now I'm out of the mania. Now I'm just cool with not drinking. I feel good. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm blonde. And my mom was just kind of like... I'm just so concerned about you all the time. Here's the damaging our hair. Here's the damaging our But it, I conditioned. I did a deep. It took me like six or seven hours to do this because I deep conditioned in between each process. I, I literally that. just let it sit on there because my hair is already fragile. So I'm like, if you overprocess your hair, you're going to be bald. And my, my stomach is not small enough yet to be bald. You know, that's a spe that bald headed big booty bitch look I is a specific lose my thing. I got Lawrence before I cut my hair. I'm losing weight, but this bitch here oh. is not going anywhere. This motherfucker here is in the goddamn building. I and was I like taking know. a selfie video, but from this angle, I was like, oh no. I was trying to send a nude the other day. And you that chin, humble. that chin made an appearance. I said, oh, no. Girl, mm -hmm. I was so, you know, I oh, mean, these hotel buddy. rooms on tour. I'm going to just show it to you because they can't see it. Mm -hmm. And I love butt pics. Let's and do it. And it had a um a book light. Send me that picture you're of us right yeah, there. Yeah, I will. Mm -hmm. um, but it had that book light. When you mm -hmm. turn the lights, I had the book light. So it was like a spotlight. Mm -hmm. Kind of like one of those, like, Art like go-go clubs. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, some nudes would hit over here. Boom, boom, boom. It was so humbling to see. How rotund I was. I've, I've deleted most of them. Mm, deleting news will really take you there, man. But it's like, this could have been really, really hot. Your boobs look great. Thank you. If I was smaller. Like, this wasn't giving what it needed to have gave because the stomach was stomaching. And, you know, shadows are weird, too. So those aren't shadows your are actual weird. proportions. But, like, you know how much I love this particular nude? If it was this body. That's fantastic. That's art. I think I'm going to blow that up and put it in my house. I just be doing nude videos now because, like, you can't see which way what is coming. So it's like by the time you realize it was fat, it's out the frame. You know, I'm just, I'm just, stomach I'm ass. just stomach ass, ass, stomach, titties. Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm just shaking niggas up. Because the picture you get to looking at is like, you're like, that bitch a little big, which is fine. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the video is like, everything's you try moving. To do, like, look back at it with this little roll right here. Mm, no, uh, I would say maybe the last time that I had sex, I recorded it. And which was fantastic. I'm like, let me tell you something. I missed a career, and I I, I know it's not, I too late. it's not too late. I do some good fucking. So good we and then everybody consented. Like it wasn't like a hidden camera situation. Like everybody. yeah, me and the person involved. I'm saying that. Well, listen, group sex is not my jam. I get distracted easy. I don't want any parts of it. But if you do that, that's a kink I won't shame. Well, some of y'all. You know what? Never mind. <laughs> Shut up. Ooh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> anyway, all all in all, that kink is fine. But um, no, it was just me and my um whoever, and um, I was recording it. And I'm like really fooling, like at the part where it's my time to shine, like where I'm doing the, the bending, I'm doing the fucking. <laughs> and baby, I got to like looking back at the camera. This role was so uh. pronounced. I look like one of them medieval statues where like it was cool to be big and they like and they like make sure they put <laughs> the role. And this, but it was I was still sexy. I still felt good about my body in the way because my waist was like really doing this. And, you know. My waist going to have to get pretty big to overshadow my ass. But I was like, mm, you kind of hefty. And, like, I was looking at my thighs. And, like, they was really, you know, I fucked bean poles most of the time. So it was, like, really overtaking this man. And I'm like, huh, you large and in charge, huh? You really, I went to look back at that and this little twist right and here. And I noticed. And that roll folded my over. My back roll only 
if I'm doing like this, because I had a back out dress on Saturday. I'm like, I'm so cute. Mm-hmm. I tried to like do a little quick turnaround, but like this roll is like it, it catches you up. So I was trying to like pose that would be like, uh huh, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. and then you end up looking stupid. And you look dumb as mm-hmm. fuck. Trying yeah. To, uh, but it's okay, like, for me right now, like, I'm losing weight. You and I are usually about 10 pounds apart, like, yeah. when we talk about, like, our weight journeys. But I saw this thing, and I want to tell you this, too. I've been on TikTok about, like, what it means to actually lose weight and what you should be paying attention to because the scale is not really, like, a good thing. And people tell you that, but when people tell you that, you feel like they're telling you that to make you feel better about not losing weight because nobody ever explains why the scale is a bad measurement of, of fat loss. But I was watching this thing, and... And the lady, she was a nutritionist and she was a personal trainer and she had been fat before. One thing about me, I've decided to stop taking fitness advice from people who have always been fit or skinny because you don't fucking know. You're just doing, you're maintaining the body God gave you, which is not what I need. I don't need, not you remembered it? Not you, like just in the group, not you. But um, she was saying when you have a, either have a lot of weight to lose or you gained a lot of weight and you're trying to get back to your like original size, like your body is taking into account what you're doing so if you go from a place of you don't really move a lot or do a lot of exercise to now you're exercising every day and you've changed your diet your body is in a state of emergency response like oh you're being like chased or you're trying to like survive so it's storing carbs and it's storing water because it thinks you're in crises because this is not a habit yet so that's why the scale goes up for a while before it goes down because your body is holding on to the things that it thinks it needs because it thinks you're in panic it thinks you're trying to stay alive instead of just like trying to your body doesn't know you're trying to lose weight mm. your body is just experiencing but, this ooh, action I need to email to let this be <laughs> no i'm trying to lose weight <laughs> but also like my body is recomping right now like i have a pair of jeans that in like literally the last day of the year because I wanted to wear, I wore this on New Year's. I wanted to wear jeans on New Year's. I could not get into them. And you know, I would lay back on the bed, put a hanger through the zipper to like get jeans up. Like I, I'm getting these fucking pants on and I just couldn't. But now since, and I've, I, it seems like I've put more weight on like since I've started working out, my waist looks so much different right now. My legs, these legs don't even really jiggle anymore. My legs seem much smaller and much tighter. So like at this point, I might get back to the scale in like two weeks. I'm not finna, because I've learned that the scale is ruining my life. It makes me quit. It makes me feel like I'm not doing anything. It makes me feel like I've plateaued. It, and I don't like to feel like a failure. I, that If anything starts to make me feel like a failure because I'm an achiever, I'd be like, oh, I don't need this. If I'm not immediately good at something and uh, not immediately working, it's mm-mm. like... Mm-mm. Mm-mm. And then it don't help that we shaped like this because... I'm still... I, I still get the looks. I'm still getting fucked. I'm still, fine, I'm as still fine as fuck, so it doesn't but matter. But I, I don't... That bitch from like three, four years ago is finer than me, and I just don't like that. But she's not finer than you. Also, also, you're also you you're a grown woman now, and I've had this conversation with my friends. Like your body at this point biologically wants a baby, so your body gets fat, and it's like we need this fat in case we have to house a human. That's what your is, body I'm is. I'm made on. to hold a baby anyway. We don't need all this fat. The baby's gonna be fine. Baby's gonna be fine. But I say all that to say, like, I have to give myself more grace. Like, I have a scale in my bedroom. I'm finna go put that bitch on the roof because I, it's, I'm not going to let it plateau my effort. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And then I also, have you heard the paper towel analogy? I think we talked yeah, about like this. Yeah, like the one, one pick piece a day. Yeah, one piece of time. Not see so I'm just not going to fucking worry about it. It ain't stopping right. no, no hoes. Right. It's not stopping no money. So, like, at this point, I'll get there when I get there. I know this summer, the way that I look at my vacation clothes, though, this summer is going to be a fucking movie with my body, whether I lose another pound or not. Whether, bitch, bitch, whether bitch, or not. And because my is, body is, when I say it's, it's tight like Nene Bob, it's, it's getting right here. Just... Mm. Mm-hmm. And with me, even looking back when I was skinny, I was so fucking poor, I couldn't even really put that shit on like that to Mm-mm. really enjoy how I look. Because what good is a beautiful body in this cheap-ass Charlotte Rouge dress that you got to wear? That's all I could afford. You got to wear it every other week because it's the only Girl, one you got. But now yeah. I be having that shit on, but now I'm heavy set. It's just like, fuck. You're not heavy I'm not heavy set. Yeah. And I need to stop talking to myself. To, to a hating-ass bitch, I'm fat. But it's just like, let a bitch get mad. I'm all kinds of fat. You know what I do when bitches call me fat. So. I know. I know. Don't make me know. Never mind. <laughs> I'll come get that nigga. But it's like, ah, it, it's harder now. You just got to adjust your own body. It's like, oh, this is fat phobic and blah, blah, blah. Listen, I got to live here, bro. I don't give a fuck Or like, also that. like, I think we talked about this maybe two episodes ago. It's just certain we shit. We talk about the body every episode yeah. because it's like, it's, it's stressful. Bodies. But it's certain shit that I just can't do the way I want to do in this body. Because I'm not used to... Like, I'm just not used to it. Mm-hmm. So I just, I want to be able to live my life comfortably. And like... If you can live your life comfortably 
in your body at 300 pounds, I think that's wonderful. Love I that just I just can't do it. And I don't think anything's wrong with the way that you look at all. I just have to do what's right I for me. I can't tell you how to feel about what your, your body is. Yeah. I've had conversations. The bitches be fat phobic, though. Like now, the, bitches do and, not and do. And the, the girls you think are kind and sensitive and sweet be fat phobic than a motherfucker. And you're like, wow. I know if we fall out, I'm going to be all types of big belly goober whale oh, absolutely. bitches. Because that's how you feel. Absolutely. That's crazy. And, that, and that's how I know. Because, again, to a hating bitch, I'm the biggest bitch ever. I'm right speechless to these hoes. And she's like, okay, well, oh, fuck okay. you. Well, and guess, guess who'll get more niggas? And not that that's a barometer for anything, but... It's but a barometer for me. It's a barometer to shut the fuck up. And the bitches like it. Don't make me know, never mind. So, um, but yeah, this is a great segue, because, like, mm. you know, our bodies just be doing different shit now. Like, we're mm. literally getting older, and you just gotta... Is your period getting shorter as you age? My period is actually getting more unbearable. Like, oh I had... God. Last week, I had cramps so bad that my mother thought I was having a miscarriage. Oh, poor baby. It was that Have you been bad. to a specialist? I went to the doctor the next day, and she gave me, like, the, um, what you call them, the ibuprofen. But I cannot, I cannot take, my body can't take another. He ain't on the phone with nobody. He just didn't want to be yeah. in this conversation. <laughs> but he, uh, not he, I'm talking about he, because we talk about him. But <laughs> my, um, I can't do birth control no more. I, I cannot afford to gain no more weight. Mm-hmm. I literally can't. Like, the patch, I gained an additional 10 pounds on the patch. Oh, no. And I was like, yeah, that put me 175. I was cool at 175. It wasn't mm-hmm. that bad. I was 175 little, little, is actually my goal weight right now. 175, I was perfect. If I could just lose them 10 pounds and get to 175, I'd be great. Mm-hmm. But it put me to 185. And that's mm-hmm. like, I can't gain no more fucking weight. Mm-hmm. I need to save all my and other... And seeing a number on the scale be making you want to kill yourself. I'm sorry. It does. I don't, yeah. I don't give a fuck. You can call me fat boba because you're like, I don't feel like fucking a, body. I don't I, feel like I'm wilding out like that. I'm not comfortable with this. I'm yeah. not. I don't give a fuck. I and don't. it's it's not fat phobia. It's, com- it's comfortable for you, your shape, and how you're used to existing. How you're used to being seen. And people treat you bad when you're bigger. They people do, do treat you bad when you're bigger. And I don't, I, I still kind of wrestle with if certain ideologies I have are fat phobic in are. certain ways I think about it. I've met fat phobic fat people because the worst fat phobic people are the people who used to be fat. Oh, for sure. Those are the worst fat phobes, are the people who Man. used to be fat, and now they cannot shut up about how unhealthy fatness is. And it's like, relax. Like, re fucking relax. And also, like, people who weren't even that fat. We're still fat because, like, the, the Kim Parker and the fucking, mm-hmm. you know, Takara of it all. Because mm-hmm. if you wasn't a size two, you are fat. So now you think you fat. But even when you sent me that video the other day from what uh, Giles had recorded and my stomach was looking like that, that, like, Brittany was with me. That broke me down. I, start, I, I started crying. I never want to see myself like that and not because it's like oh you look so terrible it's just because i don't realize that that's what other people are seeing so it fucked with my confidence because the way that i carry myself and see myself and view myself as, this, as a sexy high bitch which still still, still still but it fucked me up to the point and i had to sit and wrestle with like am i being fat phobic to myself by looking at this and it's really shaking me to my fucking we've all core. Been like even to since be we've been sitting here I've been, been conscious, been conscious about, of my posture even, and how I'm sitting. Even what I wore today, because when I did the podcast, we were in this room, I did the podcast mm-hmm. with Tyler, I kept that sweatshirt on because I knew when I sit down and I have on pants, mm-hmm. it's going to give this look mm-hmm. switch. I was burning the fuck up <laughs> in that green sweatshirt, but I was just, yeah, because <laughs> 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 go, mm-hmm. Google, because it's just like, I'll be damned, because I did, oh, when I did, I had a really great opportunity to do the, um, the, the rooftop, what's it called? The parking lot pimping with Lene Vene. Mm-hmm. But my stomach looked crazy the whole time. I didn't even want, like, I hope you don't think I was being fake. I didn't even repost it for real. I, was so I don't like, repost stuff where I don't like my body. Yeah, I did not. And I would just wish somebody would have been like, hey, baby. Um, you know what I'm saying? That's how, And that's how I felt. We'll talk about, actually, we'll talk about that later. But that's, and not you. It has nothing to do with you. But that's just how I felt, like, seeing that, like, why didn't nobody say I nothing? Yeah, well, you were engaging with me. But I'm like, so, like it was two other people in the room. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I'm like, and no shade to them either, but, because that's not their job. The, their job is not to look at my body and, and correct it. And even or when police. I said it to you, I was like, I may be sure, but I don't want to project my fat phobia on no, her. Like, no, I, I, like, I'm not going to do that. To honestly, you. to be, be so fucking for real, I plan to have a different fitness journey this year anyway. That fueled it in a negative way. Like, I'm glad that it really made me get up and really start getting into it. Because my whole thing with working out is, like, I deserve to live in a body that works. I deserve to live in a body that I'm taking care of. So I was really looking at it from a health and wellness perspective. And I wasn't really focused on weight at all. But then when I saw that, it hurt my ego. Mm -hmm. It It hurt me really, really bad. And so that, like, oh, I ordered this stair stepper. When next time you come over, I can take a picture and send it to you. Like, you know how people during the pandemic was like working at those stand up desks. 
I ordered this stair stepper that's supposed to go like under one of those and it's like a little elliptical. Chef's kiss. I do 30 minutes on it. Mm-hmm. It's fan fucking tastic. I saw somebody with a similar one and I was like, how does that work? It's wonderful. Okay. It really is. It's just it's just like that, right? It's just like that. And um, I was saying about 30 minutes I can do the first time I did it. I did 844 steps. Now I'm at like 1,020 steps. Like while I'm on it in 30 minutes, done. It's an excellent workout. And then my kettlebell, I do my kettlebells. But like I know that one of the big things with me being in shape, fuck weight loss, just in shape, is consistency. So seeing that video made me want to be consistent because whether I want to realize it or not, like – I get really big around the holidays because I'm always eating and you don't want to exercise. Everybody else is having fun and doing holiday shit and you traveling or whatever the fuck. But this made me want to be consistent because I want to be as hot as I possibly feel as hot and look as hot as I possibly can this summer. And it's right around the fucking corner. Atlanta summers, because of the weather here, start in late February, early March. We outside. We here. So I gotta get my other niggas, and it's and like so I, think, me, I gotta get my shit together. My, my humbling moment like that was when I had an bathing suit on my birthday. And I make a joke about this in stand up, but it's like that shit hurt my fucking feelings. When someone deemed me like, "Wow, you having a bathing suit? Like it's so great to see you with a bathing suit unedited and all this shit," and I was just like, "That's when you was like, now I'm Lizzo." Yeah, <laughs> and, I, and I tell the joke every night because it's so it's funny. It really and it, funny telling that, jokes is healing too. It, honestly, I yeah. got more sad about my breakup when we had that break from the road when I wasn't telling that joke every night about mm-hmm. the breakup, and it's just like I'm fucking sad because that was healing. For like to just laugh about it, mm-hmm. but yeah. So like when she DM me, like how inspiring it was to me to be fat and just in in public, it's just like, whoa, whoa. yeah. Because I think I'm like I'm so fucking cute. Look at me, I'm hot. But and, and, and she meant well. She absolutely mm-hmm. meant well. But just like to hear that, and she's probably projecting onto you too. Well, she said she's built like me, and it felt good. But and mm-hmm. then I look at her like we built the same. You know what I'm saying? Like it's mm-hmm. just like, yeah. What the fuck is this? So it yeah. just it was like, damn. I guess I am like. I mean, but I've never, you, I think you and I are in different places because I've always been, like, bigger than counterparts. Like, I've never been really, like, a small girl. I've, I always say that, like, I have, like, an Amazon body in, like, a really short situation. Like, Mm -hmm. I should be a taller person with these proportions, and that would really help if I wasn't five fucking three and a half, five four. Like, it it would really help if I was tall. But I have never really known what it was like to be small, even at my smallest. Mm -hmm. Like, my smallest is, like, 144. Like, as an adult. That's big to a lot of bitches. But even me, that was my smallest too. Even yesterday, I was posting like the throwbacks, and um, one of the guys on tour was like, "Oh man, you like about one ten, like back in the day, like you really." Because men I, don't know how much people weigh. Men, how much I weigh? No, go ahead. It's not disrespectful. Yes. Guess. You mean stand up? Stand up. <laughs> how much I weigh? Damn! I don't, I don't want nothing else from you. <laughs> Damn, how much I weigh? For the for the record, I'm not I'm not two twenty. Um, he's several pounds off. Um, I'm like below. Yeah, I'm below two hundred and twenty oh, pounds. Okay, okay. Are you fucking with me right now? <laughs> and he was like, "See, that's why you ask me shit like I'm that." I'm not. I mean, I just <laughs> as, if I'm coming, are, I don't, I don't need to know. I'm I'm not two hundred and twenty pounds, guys. I, I'm <laughs> not. Right. I, but two hundred twenty pounds is fine. But I'm not 220. See? No, see shit like that. But men, either they, they weigh, weigh over or weigh under. Like, oh, you got 110? I was like, I was like 150 here. I had a dude tell me once, and I just kind of let him rock with it. I had a dude tell me once when I was what, 165 pounds that I was 130 pounds. And I was like, bless your stupid little heart. I have not been 130 but, pounds since eighth grade. B- bless your dumb ass heart. And I just, I just let him rock with it. I'll be 130 pounds. My Fuck license it. still say 145. My license. Since I'm so far over. You're not so far over. No, you're not disrespectful. It's just I've never had anybody guess over before. Uh, so, I mean, that's fine. Like, right now. I think he realized that you it was going to be something that he thought it wasn't, so he tried to go as high. No, as no, no. Got. It's fine. It's right fine. now, I rest in between, like, 199 and, like, 203. Like, any given day. Other than that, I would have said 180. No, I'm not. 180 would be perfect right now. 180 would be amazing. Be but time. I can't safely get to 180 in the time that I want to. So, I'm comfortable with, like... Like a smooth 188, 187. I'm comfortable with that for the summertime. I'm fine with it. That's where I'm at now. Yeah. I need, I need, if I can get back But I know when I lose weight, I, like even in like here, this is not really like super sucking me in. You remember the last time you saw me and what my body looked like. No? All right, fuck you then. 
True. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I, I thought of weight. Our bodies are changing. Like, if, if I have anything that goes bump in the night, I just have so much like trauma. Like, I feel like if my dad would have went to the doctor, he'd still be here. Mm-hmm. So now it's like, hey, my, my, my thumb hurts. What is this? Mm-hmm. Hey, yeah. I farted twice. I don't like how that feels. Mm-hmm. Hey, mm-hmm. I need to come see whatever the fuck this is. Or even like the dentist. I got a oh, crown. Oh, no, you don't like the dentist. I hate the dentist. I just got this crown right here. I didn't even know what the fuck a crown was, for real. Mm-hmm. I was like, they said I need one, and I don't want to miss, because they were like, it's a, it's, a, it's a side tooth. I'm like, I need my side tooth. Because that's the first thing I'm coming for in an argument with a bitch is that side tooth. I'm sorry. So they take my side tooth, whatever y'all need to do to this tooth, to keep it in my goddamn mouth. Let's do it. Let's, let's mm-hmm. do it. Mm-hmm. So I, I went, they gave me the crown, and then everything thing sweet I've been eating for the past two weeks has been fucking this whole... Mm. I'm like, I just fixed this side. Now I gotta fix this. I gotta. Mm. I go to the dentist on Wednesday. Mm. Child, that's how I am with my vitamins and minerals. Any new body ache, any new body thing. I'm sweating too much. I'm not sweating enough. I'm I'm stressed out. I got a headache. I, I my skin is weird. I am into vitamins and min- and not that I'm like one of them holistic elderberry bitches who don't like to go to the doctor, but I do like to start with vitamins and minerals. The ashwagandha has been saving my my fucking life. I have been like on edge about things. I'll take them two ashwagandhas in the morning and them two ashwagandhas at night. I'm on a fucking cloud. I'm do- it's like being high without actually being high. Like, the part of the highness where you don't care about stuff is the only part you get. You don't get the, I can't really function and I want to eat everything. And it doesn't feel intoxicating. It just mm-hmm. feels like you're leveled out. Mm-hmm. So shit that would bother you, you just be like, okay. okay. Or you become more solution oriented. Like, instead of, like, having, like, hyper reactions to things, you're just like, oh, how do we solve the problem? At least that's how it, it works for me. Um, so I'm, like, my little, p- my little pill pack. Save right in my goddamn purse. That's cute. I keep it on. Yeah, I have, I have a longer one. I need to get into that. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I don't plan on going to that goddamn doctor. Anything? I will make it takes a lot for me to go to the doctor because I be asking my mama first. Um, not that she's a doctor, but she be knowing. And so I will go to the doctor if, like, I know it's something that my family doesn't know about. You know what I'm saying? My mother doesn't know about. Or mm-hmm. I can't ask, like, hey, does this run in the family? Or is this something I should be concerned about? I got a couple doctors in my family, and my cousin is a nurse practitioner. So before I go spend my money, I usually have one of them look at me or, like, start there. Um, and if they don't have the equipment to look at me, then I'll go to the doctor. Oh, shit, I'm going. But care, for the moment, and even when I have insurance, I just, I don't like experiencing medical racism. I think that's what keeps me out of the doctor is that I can't always ensure that I'm going to have a black lady doctor. And then I can't always assume that the black lady doctor is on my side. So, like, I am... Um, It's just, it's just, I don't want to come in here and pay hundreds of dollars for you to tell me to fuck off. And especially, that's the worst thing about this weight gain. The absolute worst is I could come in there with a fucking broken neck and it would be, have you tried losing weight? I don't want, I I just simply cannot stand it because that's lazy medicine. Mm -hmm. It's lazy medicine and you don't care. You want me in and out of here as soon as possible. You want to charge me without doing any work. And because I'm not small, you want to attribute any and every problem that I have to being overweight, which they think most black women are overweight even when they're small. Even when they're small, they're saying black women. The BMI scale is racist and eugenicist. Mm -hmm. We need to go ahead and put that out there that there is no need for that measurement anymore. That was made for white supremacy to judge people's ability to participate in capitalism. It's not a real thing. It's fucked up. Yeah. Like, even, like, I'm just going to have to go get my breast reduction done at a place that does purely cosmetic surgeries because even when I lose the weight to qualify for breast reductions under insurance, they always find a loophole that goes back to you're not small enough, you're not small enough, you're not small enough. Literally, if you measure my proportions my breast proportions, my ass proportions, waist, and my height, I I really shouldn't be able to walk good. Like, these proportions are not healthy for a person to be carrying around on a regular basis, yeah. which I'm sure is why my joints hurt, why my back hurts, mm-hmm. all these things. I found a place. I saw another girl get her reduction done there. The tits look beautiful. Six bands. I can do that. Get I can do six bands. Friend. I'm getting these titties off my body, baby, because fuck y'all. I'm not going to emaciate myself. And it's like, the thing's not going to go down. They're not. And whenever, like, I showed you that picture of when I was uh, a freshman in college and I look like a fucking bobblehead. Yeah. The titties look bigger there. It's going to be even bigger. There's going to even be, because you're taking my core away. Yeah. Um, I got a sewing, y'all. Speaking of damage on here, I forgot to mention mm-hmm. that. Um, But, yeah, like, let's just try to breeze through this, because shit you just don't do no more. I, well, I just can't eat all, half the shit I like to eat. So that's True. really just... 
And like when I come up the stairs, like my bones crack with every step. And that's crazy. That's so annoying. I, Especially I when you're that. hanging out with your younger friends and they hear it. Ugh. I got friends younger than me and they'll hear my knee make a noise and sometimes they're polite about it and try to speed past it. But then they'll give me like this look where it's just like, you okay? And when like, my stomach acts up, I can't do a good cartwheel no more. Aww. My cartwheel used to be pretty decent. I failed the last time I tried to do a cartwheel. My cartwheel, my legs won't even go all the way up. Mm. My legs be like this. Mm -mm. And it's... I can't drink how I used to, even when I was drinking. Like, liquor, I used to really be able to drink liquor. I might have a hangover for an hour and then continue on about my life. Liquor, especially dark liquor now, yes. if I over Like, I can have one whiskey and several champagnes and be fine. But if I'm whiskey, 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 I'm out of there, bud, for like the next two or three days. I'm fucked up. I cannot do that shit no more. A, a switch went off when I turned 24. My body mm. just couldn't do shit. I was hungover for a month once. A month? I think I had legit alcohol poisoning um, New Year's 2019. Mm -hmm. I was throwing up the entire day for like, and then and even the following day. But every time I drank for the next month, I was throwing up. Mm. Until like February. Do you take BC powder before you drink heavily? I did it that day. But I have not drank heavily since that day. I mm. got drunk at homecoming. But other than mm. that, it was fine. Mm. Um, what you going to do in New Orleans? BC, I guess. Per. I'm gonna figure, figure that shit out. Per. Um, so advice to young girls. Um, Take care of your body now. Like, and this is from a person who yeah. who I drank a lot when I was at Alabama State. I overdrank. I drank a whole bunch, smoked. I did some drugs I shouldn't have done. Like, I did some things. That shit is not, it just doesn't, like, the damage you do to your body just doesn't go away. And while you're creating those habits, you're creating other habits. So while you're doing all this drinking, you're also creating a habit of not being active. So like your 20, 21, 22 year old body is built like that because you're young. Honestly, uh, when I tell you, your body just, you're going to wake up one day like, who the fuck's body who, is Who this? is it? And not even in a way that you're disappointed or you don't like it. It just doesn't feel like you. Yeah. It's not the you that you're used you, to. You got to start. When I started having to put powder in my creases and shit. Baby. And, when, and when, like, when my ass started sweating, I was like, what the fuck is this? Or even like, I, I think I have pretty nice tits for them to be big. Like they don't really sag, like even outside of a bra. But my shape and like where my fat lands in my titties has changed to where like, I might have to pull these bitches up and around a little bit for them to look good under a top. And it's like, what is all these fucking mechanisms and tools and tricks that I got to use to look like myself. So just take care of your body, man. And if you're into surgery, get surgery. That makes sense. Wait to see how your body going to pan out. How it's going to pan out. Like, because my hips didn't come to I was like 22, 23. Mm. You can BBL at 19 and then your real hips come on top of the BBL. You trying to that's, figure out what? That's a hill I'm willing to die on. Nobody needs a fucking BBL at Listen, 18 or 19 years old. Your body, you're still, you're still a teenager. Your brain not even done. Yeah, and, out and I know that this is a very old lady-ish conversation. Shut your old millennial asses up. But like, I'm not, I'm still not as hippie as I should be for the ass that I have. And people think that I'm hippie. That's just my ass peeking around from the back. I don't really have a lot of hips. Ooh, I'm telling you, I got all the ass in the world. I, I know you're not talking. Now that that's not something you could say. Look at this. I am sitting with some shit. You on sit. Here. You taller when you sit down. Who are you I talking am, to? I am. But, but anyway, so um, I have hip dips though. I didn't really. I have one hip dip. That is the craziest shit I've seen in my life. One. I have one. It's bananas. This mismatch nipple and one hip dip thing. God just be putting anybody together. <laughs> you like that lady? But uh, oblongs with the one titty. I will knife you. <laughs> But no, like my body, my the hips I have now didn't get pronounced until I was like twenty four or twenty five. Really? Like, give your body a fucking chance to settle, and then honestly, Even not their titties. Not trying to be funny, y'all getting these BBLs and things, and then not realizing, not y'all, because I like I want surgery, I want lipo on my stomach, I want I want my tits reduced. But the things that keep me from doing that are I want to have babies when like within like the next two or three years. You don't know what those babies are gonna do to your body, and unless you got a nigga who can wheel you back to the booty room after you <laughs> immediately immediately after you have the baby, then you might just be starting from square one with the same shit God gave you. If you know, because good BBLs take multiple rounds. Good lipo, you have to have that shit maintenance. You have to, I've heard, I've seen people, I've seen family members get lipo and then not realize you, it's not a, a end all be all to just eat whatever you fucking want. That weight's going to your fucking that's neck the, and ankles. That's the like, other thing about working out. I got to work out the rest of my life. You had, you had some pain in that voice. I just, all my the life I had my to life. do fucking lunges and shit, bitch. <laughs> like, it's going to be hard. 
It's gonna be hard. I saw a girl in the gym last week had the baby on her back. I said, I know that's right, bitch. Get it. Mm-hmm. You can do what you gotta do, ho. Cause just take care of the body that you got and be judicious about what you do with it. Like even yeah, now, I, that's my word. That's my word of the of Clearly. the of the month. Actually, I'm doing like you know words of the day and stuff. I like that. Oh, SAT. But per per. Um. But just be be thoughtful. Um. Have discernment about what you're doing with your body. And if you are doing shit that's actively harming your body, like over drinking, like I do. Take that, into, men. take that into consideration, or dating men, take that into consideration when it's difficult to lose weight. Take that into consideration yeah. when it's difficult to work out, when it's difficult to get motivated, when it's difficult to do all these things. At least be honest, I know I'm doing this thing to my body, so it might take me a minute to get into the habits of a healthy person. That's all I'll say. Yeah. Period. Per. Um, that's really it. That's, you, know you ain't got I no do. advice for these bitches? I oh we, yeah, yeah, we you did. Them oh, it was, okay, I'm, I'm sorry. And leave them okay. niggas alone; they'll stress you out. Oh my god, just and pick, honestly, and I I keep rotating the same three. I add a wild card like every eighteen months. Um, they will stress. You they will stress out. you. If get get some get some ones that are are a little less disgusting than the rest of them, and just stick with them. Don't let them niggas take your best years. Mm mm. And, and get tested. Get tested. Even oh, it's just you. Even I don't care if you see that nigga every night. I don't care. And I know it's hard to get tested. It, it takes a lot of like, I, I, even at my big age, getting tested is like, yeah. What if I sat on the wrong toilet seat? What the niggas a liar? You, you just gotta get you tested. get tested. Take care of yourself. And 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 whatever. If something go bump in that goddamn night, you need to go down to the doctor. Going you got some insurance. He's selling your parents shit. Mm-hmm. Go to the insurance. Mm-hmm. I mean, go to the doctor people mm-hmm. and get that or blood find drawn. find you some free resources. I know we shit on free resources and it's real crackheady, but you find you a clinic. Go go somewhere. And that's, and it's it. gonna, now that's gonna be humbling because again, you recommended that clinic that I went to, and that lady had one tooth. That in was my not mouth, my experience when I went there. And she was in my coochie, but I got what I needed. That was not my experience when I was there. I don't know who this toothless woman that lady looked that like Ray you. from Princess and the Frog. Well, that'll be all from us, you guys. Thank you so much for joining <laughs> us she today. Got to <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>